What's up, everyone? Justin Mello and Justin Graver back here with another exclusive YouTube breakdown. Today, we're breaking down film of LSU wide receiver Malik Neighbors. A quick disclaimer, heads up, notice to our followers on YouTube out there. If you've been pay paying attention, following along, and looking for the Ola Fashanu film breakdown, we posted it on Monday morning to the YouTube channel, and unfortunately, it got blocked. Completely blocked off YouTube, I guess. They didn't like the all 22 footage we were using there. So we posted it to Twitter slash X, whatever you call it. If you head to the community tab on our channel on YouTube, I posted a link there. If you're not a big Twitter user, uh, follow me at Titans Film Room on Twitter. You can find the video there. Um, so that quick disclaimer out of the way, Justin, let's focus here on Malik Neighbors. Just initial thoughts on this top five, top seven prospect in the draft class. Well, some background information, right? He's one of the rare prospects that's good enough to say, I'll do what I want to do when I want to do it, right? Like he went to the NFL combine, he was physically present, but he didn't participate in anything. He didn't even weigh in, which was pretty rare. I think that was just like him, Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, maybe Marvin Harrison Jr. Like it's three or four of them that did that. Well, thankfully LSU's pro day was the other day and he did decide to do everything. So he weighed in. Uh, I'd love to know why he didn't weigh in at the combine, by the way, because when you're six foot, 200 pounds, which is what we saw at the pro day, right. great numbers, not hiding anything, right? These guys are smart. They've always got a reason. They've got good counsel. So I, I'd love to know what the reason was behind that. But six foot, 200 pounds, I mean, to give you context, Jamar Chase was six foot, 201 when he weighed in at the combine. So essentially, like for like measurements. And how about the testing? Okay. 42 inch vertical at the <sighs> NFL combine. Uh, sorry, at the pro day, 129-inch broad jump. Like, these yeah. are elite results. You can't juice those results, right? So don't worry about pro day versus combat. Those are exact results, right? The the 40, you always hear different reported times from the pro day. It was reported at 435. I mean, yeah. that's really, Whether it was 435 or 438, I mean, really good time, right? So outstanding testing at the pro day. Firmly established himself as a top 10 pick. I mean, maybe even top five. Yeah, maybe even top five to the Chargers, top six to the Giants. But if he's on the board at pick number seven and Joe Alt is not, or if they feel like, you know, they want to take the playmaker, or the guy who scores touchdowns over the guy who doesn't, as we've heard Brian Callahan say so much already this offseason, Malik Neighbors very much could be in play if he makes it to seven. And I think there's not enough made about his age because... In this day and age, you get the NIL deals. You got kids staying in college for longer, not coming out as early as they used to. And Malik Neighbors is the exception to what is now becoming more and more of a standard. He's only 20 years old, arrived in, at LSU, and started six games as a true freshman, played in 11 games that season. Uh, the, the following two years as a sophomore and a junior, he led LSU in catches and receiving yards. He's one of only two players in LSU history to top 3,000 career receiving yards. He is the all-time leader for LSU in receptions and receiving yards. And this is a school that has put out so many good wide receivers. And we can go back in the history, but just looking at the last few years, you got guys like Odell Beckham, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, like... He outproduced all those guys in his time at LSU. Finished last season with 89 catches, 1,569 yards, and 14 touchdowns. The year before that, 72 catches, over 1,000 yards, three touchdowns. He's been a playmaker since he arrived on campus. And it's not just about the playmaking. It's the explosive playmaking. Like the, the production is what it is, but he, he accumulated in his time at LSU 66 catches of 15-plus yards, 41% of his catches went for 15 plus yards. He is a an explosive play machine. And uh, there are some, you know, concerns about his ability versus press coverage just because it's a very small sample size. You really have to dig through the all 22 to find any reps of him facing press coverage because cornerbacks were so terrified that if they miss that jam at the line of scrimmage, he's just going to fly right by them because again, he is an explosive athlete. First step quickness accelerates to his top speed in just a couple of steps. But if you do go down and dig into the tape, which unfortunately in this breakdown, we're not going to see any reps against press coverage. But, um, you know, Matt Harmon does the reception perception profile. Really good profile for Malik Neighbors. 72% success rate versus press coverage, according to Matt Harmon's tracking. And he broke multiple tackles, not just one tackle, but multiple tackles on 20% 
of his catches when out in space, which is the highest rate of any receiver in the last four draft classes. And what's crazy about Malik Neighbors is you'd think with a guy with his elusiveness, his tackle breaking ability, his first step explosiveness, that LSU would get him the ball in the screen game quite a bit. You'd think, well, a lot of those broken tackles must have come on screen plays and a lot of those explosive plays. No, he received eight screen targets in his LSU career. So this is a guy who makes plays down the field. He makes plays at all three levels of the field, as we're going to see as we get into this breakdown. So, Justin, any other background info you want to give, or should we start looking at the tape? No, I mean, I I think I covered it, and then you covered it even more. Let's, Let's dive into the tape. Yeah, so before we get into this film breakdown, let me tell you about Sinker's Beverages in East Nashville and Bluegrass Beverages in Hendersonville, our sponsor for this breakdown. Sinker's Beverages, Bluegrass Beverages, huge selection of liquor, wine, spirits, booze. And if you uh, head over to the sinkersbeverages.com website, you can join the in-crowd. In-crowd members get access to allocated wine and spirits, exclusive events, and early access to barrel releases and more. Check out our sponsors. Thank you to them. All right, we're going to start here looking at a few plays from the 2022 season. This is something I like to do personally because I like to look at how a receiver is progressing in their career. It's it's you can learn a lot about a guy based on how they they improve throughout their time in college and get an indication of if they're going to keep improving as they enter the NFL. And with a guy like Neighbors who's only 20 years old, I think it's even more relevant to look at how he's been progressing because this isn't a guy who's already peaked by any stretch. He's like I said, he's a really young player. So this first rep is against Florida from 2022, and this is what I would call you know not necessarily a good rep. This is a loss for him. And as we look at this, it's a simple come curl route, come back on the outside. He's trying to threaten downfield with his speed, but he does not really create any separation at the top of this route. Doesn't use his body well to shield off the cornerback. You can see that that arm on the outside there, the right arm, trying to to body off the cornerback. But he does allow the defender to come into his frame. You can see the, the right arm outstretched there of the defensive back getting in and breaking up this pass. And this is something when I started watching Neighbors film, I started on 2022 and I was like, man, this happens kind of a lot. I'm kind of worried about his ability to to separate in the short area here and to, although he has that deep speed, he doesn't in this rep particularly use it well to threaten down the field. You can see him trying to eat up this cushion. You can see him try to sink the hips and stop on a dime here, but the cornerback is never really threatened by the downfield attack and is ready for this break back to the ball. So just wanted to point out this rep as a failure here so we can see where neighbors has improved because if we go a few games further into the season here now we're looking against alabama neighbors at the bottom of your screen this is a very similar play neighbors does a a similar makes a similar move at the top of his route here to try to create separation as we take a closer look and you can see that same kind of movement there with the right arm pushing off the cornerback this is potentially illegal, but it's one that they let you get away with quite often. So I'm not going to pick any nits on that. But what I like to see here is coming back towards the ball downfield, outstretched body, and actually using that body to create a shield between the ball and the defender. And you can see it a lot better in this rep than you that I mean, he does a lot better job of it on this rep. Obviously, the cornerback doesn't play it quite as well. Neighbors, again, doesn't really get separation selling the downfield route, but he does get separation when he snaps right it there. off here using that right arm and snapping back. And then instead of trying to get up field before the ball gets there, watch how his body goes almost 45 degrees back towards the quarterback there outstretched to create that separation and bring in this contested catch. It's fun. The two words, I was trying to think of two words that come to mind when I watch those two reps. The first rep for me, the loss is a little bit timid. You know, you think mm-hmm. like he's a little timid attacking the ball. Whereas this, this is a very aggressive rep right, right here. And this is a different play. This is from the same game, 2022 against Alabama, but this is a different play. Almost looks the same though. Again, using that right yeah. arm, the inside arm to create space they're holding off the defender with that left arm, Just keeping enough. the def- keeping the defender's hands off of him so he doesn't get disrupted, almost like he's boxing out in basketball. And then again, jumping back towards the ball, getting off the ground, creating elevation and space, and giving him room to make this contested catch in tight space. Just enough, right? Just enough where he creates that separation with that right arm. Okay, we're on to 2023 here, and this is an incomplete pass. It's not the most accurate throw. We're going to go in and take a closer look at how he's unable to make this reception, but it's a similar issue. It's it's similar to what we saw in that Florida rep early on in his career. 
um, as he tries to come back to the ball again. The ball is sort of low and away, but again, he doesn't do a great job shielding off the defender here. I think this throw is also late, so some of this is certainly on the quarterback. Neighbors does a much better job, though, using his vertical speed to threaten the cornerback. And look at the cornerback's hips. Now, I'll just give everyone a tip out there about watching wide receiver play. Sometimes it's easier to tell how well the wide receiver runs a particular route by looking at the cornerback than it is by looking at the receiver himself. And it's a lot about timing, a lot about setting up the defender. So here, neighbors, explosive first step out off the line of scrimmage. I'll play that in real time. Eats up that cushion. And then right there, as soon as he threatens outside and the cornerback's hips flip, neighbors is sinking his hips, stuttering the feet, and wait, wait, coming wait, back to the He's lost. Ball. Look at him right there. <laughs> Yeah, when you get your back fully to the to the offensive player, you don't even right. know which direction he's breaking. Now, again, this ball's late. The ball should be arriving right now. It should be, yep. But it's late, it's away, it's inside, and the defender is able to come back and make a play on the ball. If we look at this one from the end zone cam, we can really see how the defender is able to disrupt this one. So as the ball approaches neighbors, he is doing a good job reaching away from his body with his hands, but just can't quite do enough to keep the cornerback from knocking the ball free. I think that this is an area where he did show a lot of improvement from his sophomore season to his junior season, but still a little bit to be improved in this area in terms of keeping the defender on his backside. Um, just wanted to point that out as we dive into the tape here. Now we're this is 2023 against Alabama. Oh. This route is a masterpiece. I think we should go back and take a closer look at this one because Neighbors does... He's he's varied in the way that he breaks off his routes, especially on the deep ball. Now, this is a slot rep. Neighbors ran almost 60% of his routes from the slot, which is just something to consider. 40% on the outside, 60% from the slot. So is he more of a slot guy? Can he win on the outside? Well, we'll see him win on the outside plenty in this video. We already saw it in those two plays from 2022 against Alabama. This one is a sort of a slot post. And if we watch him come out of his initial stem here, you can see where he is in relation to the hash marks. He's about you know a step outside. As he takes this stem up field, he's going outside, so he's moving further and further away from the hedge from the hash marks, and he gets this defender. It's it's the same defender who had the PBU. Same defender who had the PBU a second ago, and he gets this defender to open his hips slightly to the outside by stemming yep. his route outside. And then there are times where you'll see neighbors take sort of like a false step, sort of like a hesitation, maybe give an out shoulder fake before breaking up the field. Other times, he just flies right by you. And I think that variance in his route tree is really special because a lot of guys get sort of locked into doing the same moves. And when the cornerback is expecting you to sort of put a move on him, do one of those little hesitation steps or, or a head fake to the outside – it's a, it's a clue to the defender that you're about to make a break in your route. But Neighbors is so explosive and has such good first step quickness that he's able to change the direction of his route here without losing any speed. He's built up the speed off the line of scrimmage. And then right here, it's subtle, the ankle flexion there. Yeah, as you watch say, look at that ankle. That left ankle come down and plant and all of a sudden he is breaking inside and then he just uses that incredible speed. Look at how much space he I mean, he's running away from the defenders here. And this isn't against some small, so this isn't Louisiana Monroe or some small school with, with players who aren't going to the league. This is Alabama who has two cornerbacks going probably in the first two rounds of this draft. In, in the first round. No, in, I mean, they should probably well, both go in the first They round. could go, I mean, Terry and Arnold and Kool-Aid McKinstry are both possible first rounders, if not early second rounders. Um, and he just absolutely blows by them with his speed here. But it's not just about the raw speed. And that's what I wanted to point out. That little that move to get up the field, we're going to watch it one more time in real speed. It's just crazy how fast he can change directions without losing any speed in his in his route. That type of flexibility, that type of ability. You remember, you know, the old saying, if he's even, he's leaving. Yeah. I mean, not a chance in heck on this rep. Not a chance in heck. This is the special ability you get in the downfield throw. The throw is the ball's a little underthrown, but because he's created so much space, like he has to slow up for this ball a little bit. But because there's right. so much space that he's created with this route, right there, yeah, like measure the amount of separate. What's he got? Seven, eight, nine, ten yards. Yeah, but if we pause it at you know this point, it's at least right. five yards. You're at an angle, so it's a little further than just a straight five yards. So yeah, I mean that that is impressive. All right, we're still in the Bama game here. We're gonna look at a bunch of reps from the Bama game again, lined up in the slot. 
This rep we're looking at now, this is a, a broken play scramble drill. How do you make yourself available to the quarterback? Can you display that football IQ here to continue to work to get open when the initial play breaks down? Here we have neighbors in motion before the snap, and this is something that I'd love to see whichever team drafts him use him a lot with this motion. We've seen a lot of the short you motion stuff taken over in the NFL, Mike McDaniel and the Dolphins sort of bringing it to the forefront and uh, using it to get favorable matchups. This is one reason why we didn't see neighbors face a lot of press coverage. In addition to teams just being terrified of him is that he often was the guy in motion at the snap. And like I said, 60% of his routes run from the slot just positions him better against, you know, maybe not the, de the best defender, the best cornerback on the other team, which is something that if he reaches his potential in the NFL, he's going to have to prove he can routinely beat the best defender, the best secondary player on the opposing team. But he didn't always have to do that in college, and you like to see what he was able to do when he did have those chances. But here we're looking at him in the slot, and this is the part where the play is made, is here his route is coming to a conclusion, right? The, the play as designed is him to sit down in this zone, and you've got the defender there keyed in on him and sort of making a play here to cut off this passing lane between neighbors and his quarterback as Daniels has a nice pocket to work with here. But as soon as this cornerback starts to faint this direction and try to cut off this passing lane, Neighbors uses his recognition. He's like, well, my route dies here, but I'm, that doesn't mean I'm just going to stand here and be covered right. and let this guy cover me. He uses this momentum against him as the defender starts coming down. He takes the, the route up across the field and continues working to get open for his quarterback. So we'll see that here. As soon as the defender starts stepping this way, Neighbors is going the other way. And now it's a race and you're not going to, there's not a lot of guys that are no. going to win a race against Malik neighbors. Put that arm up, let your quarterback know that you are open. And then my favorite part about this rep, which we'll see again closer up is once the ball's coming, look at that. He was taking this route up the field to yep. create that, to continue to create that space, not allow the defender to get close to him and recover. But as soon as the ball starts arriving, he comes back to the ball doesn't allow the defender to make a play on it. Makes a fantastic catch. Here we have a broadcast replay, so we get a better look at it. There's the initial move. Route is dead. Defender tries to cut off the passing lane. Nope, I'm going this way. Open, put that hand up, let your quarterback know you're open in this scramble drill where the quarterback's eyes could be anywhere by this point. And then when he reaches the top of that SEC logo, he's coming back to the ball. Again, using the underhanded catching technique as opposed to attacking it with his hands. But when the ball's low like this and you've got a defender on your hip, better to use your body and shield off that defender and make sure you make the grab. So a nice rep here for Malik Neighbors. I love that you said it's a clean pocket, right? Because it's a clean pocket. But if you look at it, it's almost like he's in, he's in scramble drill, essentially, right? Scramble because drill, like yeah. the play, the, my route is dead. But he finds a way to get open, make a play for his quarterback. You look at the some of the biggest passing plays that – occur in the NFL and at the next level, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, it's that yeah. off script scramble drill a lot. Right. And you look at the way Will Levis has done some of that stuff. You really start to like the potential pairing between a Will Levis and a Malik neighbors. Oh yeah. That pairing could be like so one. explosive. I mean, Levis his propensity to attack downfield and neighbors ability to get it to be open down the field and make these kind of grabs even in a tight situation. I mean, he, he blew by this cornerback. He was wide open, but again, it takes time for the quarterback to find you in a scramble drill like this, but that ability to come back to the ball and make the catch, just so, so elite. Here's another rep, same game, again lined up in the slot against zone coverage this time. You see that linebacker try to get hands on him. This is one of my favorite parts about Neighbors' game is his ability to anticipate contact from the defense. Now again... If you read some scouting reports, you might see some some of his negatives are that he doesn't do great when defenders play physical with him down the field. I don't know if I agree with, with some of those things you'll read here. Neighbors does a great job finding the soft spot in the zone, but I want to really pay attention to how he gets around this defender. Because as soon as that defender puts his hands up here, he's trying to disrupt Neighbors' route, the timing and the, the landmarks here. Neighbors just sort of dips his shoulder and brushes off the contact. It's almost like he's not even touched. And then he peels his route around here behind that defender in front of the safety down the field. And this is him making a play in the intermediate level. So I said we'll see him make plays at all three levels of the field. We've already seen the, the short area stuff with those curl routes in the beginning. Seen a couple explosive plays down the field. Now we're seeing him make a play over the intermediate level. And this is what you love. Slip that first tackle. 
He doesn't get a ton of yak here, but it's that ability to slip that first tackle, to be aware that a defender is coming at him, that spatial awareness to know where the defense is. And again, just finding that soft spot in the zone, knowing where to snap your route off over the middle of the field. Again, the zone coverage, a lot of it is feel, right? Like obviously you have landmarks, you have distances down the field that your quarterback's expecting you to be. But a lot of times that that is dependent against man coverage. Against zone coverage, you, you have to adjust your routes on the fly where based on where the defense is to find those holes. And look at this. This is his the best receiver on LSU, and there's nobody within seven yards of him when the ball arrives. Like, that is crazy. It's funny because, of course, everyone loves to make plays vertically down the field, and he makes plays at all three portions, like you said. But I personally think his bread and butter at the next level is going to be this kind of play. It's going to be the damage he can do in the intermediate portion. And the reason I say this is because my favorite two traits of his, and we've seen it on display already throughout the early portion of this tape, is his burst, uh, short area quickness, and explosiveness. And those three things, they lean very favorably to making plays in that 12 to 20 yard, uh, you know, down 12, 20 yards down the field. So this is his bread and butter at the next level, in my opinion. And. This will remind Titans fans, or it should remind Titans fans a lot, of a very, very, very good receiver that was not on the team for nearly as long as he should have been. How many times did we see Ryan Tannehill hit A.J. Brown over the middle off play action yep. on a play like on this? this? Exact type of play. There's no play action here, but y- you use play action to suck that linebacker up when you have neighbors on the outside. It's really going to open things up for him to make explosive plays, to catch the ball over the middle of the field. And another thing I like about this play is even though there's no defender threatening, He's still coming back to the ball. He's still making it the easy catch. And he's also going up with his hands. He's not catching this with his body, but it allows him to turn it up field quicker. And the the transition from receiver to ball carrier here as he gets his feet under him and already has that left hand out to stiff arm this defender and, and break this first tackle. I haven't seen a lot of comparisons of neighbors to AJ Brown, but I think that they exist. I mean, they're similar height, six feet. AJ, I think, is 6'1", 200 pounds. AJ's a, a bigger guy, 220, 225. Um, neighbors is faster and slighter. But I think play style-wise, the last play we're going to look at on this tape really reminds me of AJ Brown. And I know it's not; it's kind of a strange comparison to make, but I, I see some AJ Brown-esque flashes on his game. And I honestly think he could be a better player than AJ because he's more explosive. He's a little bit better at just running by you down the field. All right, this next play we're looking at, another example of him in motion at the snap. Again, I'd love to see him utilized in this way at the NFL level. Just allows him this free release against a defender who is working you know, with an eight, nine-yard cushion off the snap. This defender has to come with him in space and then figure out neighbors, when you line him up in the slot, he can go any direction, right? He can come up and turn around. He can go this way. He can go outside. He can go down the field. There's just so many options when you have a slot receiver who can run by people. So in this particular instance, you got a little bit of a rub route at the bottom of the screen here with number two picking this defender, trying to, you know, free him up here as this guy has to run around this little action. And it just creates so much space for neighbors to get the ball in his hands. If he's used like this at the next level, this little short motion stuff where he runs his route right out of the motion, he's wide open when he catches the ball, got closest guys four or five yards away, able to pick up the first down, almost run by him. There will be times when he, I mean, against lesser competition, we're looking at Alabama here, there's plays like this on his tape where he takes this ball to the end zone. And this ball, if it wasn't thrown inside, like watch how Neighbors has to turn his body back around inside to catch this ball. If this ball was to the outside, allowing him to maintain his speed as he catches it, he's probably scoring on this field immediately. Yeah. Another one of him in the slot, another little quick short area gain that he turns into a big play with his explosive after the catch ability and i want to pay attention here how he snaps this route off because again when you're playing against a guy like neighbors who has the deep speed that he has his ability to threaten down the field just terrorizes cornerbacks so this is one of those plays where again he changes direction without losing speed and look at the cornerback look how long it takes the cornerback's feet footwork to adjust to the new direction of this route the cornerback still in his back pedal one step two step three steps into his back pedal after neighbors makes his break before he realizes that this is a you know that the route has changed here and this is just this isn't bad defense i mean i'm not calling out the defender i'm more highlighting how quickly neighbors can snap this route from a stem to a slant and create so much wide open space there underneath and then it's just get so hard the, to match him step for step on a route like that. 
Right, especially if you're not getting physical at the line of scrimmage with him. And that's, again, why they line him up in the slot so much because look at what the outside receiver is dealing with. Is this Brian Thomas Jr.? He's outside here. He's, you know, the cornerback's ready to jam him at the line if necessary. There's a very short amount of space here that he has to work with. On the other hand, Neighbors is dealing with nine yards of cushion here. That right. gives him so much more space to work with that when he threatens up the field, the cornerback's like, oh, is this a slot fade? You know how many slot fades Malik Neighbors ran? I think like 20% of his routes were slot fades. He's ready to get up the field and defend this, but because you can threaten that ability, then when you snap it off this direction, the cornerback's expecting you to go that way, just yep. creates so much open space. And again, the immediate transition from receiver to ball carrier, as soon as he catches the ball, he's looking to get upfield, just runs through these guys, runs right by them, and turns this into a 15-yard gain instead of like an 8-yard catch. And when you show routes like this and you show how effective he is from the slot, this is a Titans podcast, right? I started thinking about the fit of him alongside DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley, who ne- neither of them are natural slot receivers, right? Hopkins, we saw move around a little bit last year at that spot. But you, t- you said labors, 60% of his routes this past year run from the slot. You talk yeah. about his ability to line up there, come in uh, pre-snap motion, as you said, take advantage of advantageous matchups. All of a sudden, it's a very natural fit in, in you know, 11 personnel for the Titans. Yeah. And here we see uh, a similar, you know, stem on this route that is a very different play. And what's crazy about this route to me is that he doesn't win in the route. He wins at the catch point. And that's something else I want to point out is that he doesn't always have to blow by a cornerback to make a big play. Right. So we got a similar big cushion here, nine yards off the line of scrimmage. The stem when neighbors comes out of this route is pretty similar here as he attacks up the field. But instead there, he sort of fakes like this is going to be a slant again. Yep. Does this little stutter stop and go. But again, these cornerbacks have been taught already. Like this guy runs a slot fade a lot. Be ready for the slot fade. If you get beat underneath, that's fine. We'll rally and make the tackle. Do not get beat deep. That's clearly in the cornerbacks head here on this play. And Neighbors doesn't really create any separation with this move in the middle of his route. But that's fine when you can make catches like this one. And uh, you'll see the cornerback is mirroring well. He's ready to break up the field with him. Breaks up the field here. Squeezes Neighbors to the sideline. I mean, this is how you teach defensive backs to, to cover really explosive receivers. Squeezing him to the sideline. Ball's there. Great rep. Hard to see what's happening here, but Neighbors makes an incredible sideline catch. I think when you sent me notes on this play, Justin, you said no idea how he gets his feet in bounds here. Yeah, that's the note I had. That's right. That's the play I had. That's right. That's the note I had. Sorry for this play. So this is the broadcast replay because if you're wondering how the hell does he get his feet in bounds, we're going to see it in this broadcast replay. How can you cover this better than 13 has it covered? He's got his hand in the bread basket there, trying to disrupt at the catch point. Now I'm gonna knit, I'm gonna pick some nits again, Justin, because this is not a catch at the NFL level. Watch right. somehow. Look at his feet right now. First of all, I mean, any normal human being is running like this, this fast down the field. Already has your feet hovering over the white of the sideline. You're no no way you have the body control to get your feet back in bounds. But watch how his foot, this foot. Angles back inbounds to touch down inside. Look, it's moving the wrong direction. How does he do that? Wow. <laughs> Gets his it lands foot. nowhere near where it was when it was hovering. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Gets his foot down inbounds with a few inches to spare. But if we're going to be nitpicky here, where does the next foot come down? Out of bounds. This is a great catch at the NCAA level. This is not a catch in the NFL. Well, doesn't he know he only needs one? I'm sure he does, and this is sort of this is one of my little pet peeves when I scout college receivers. He, knows he is, only needs one. I want to see what you would be able to do with NFL rules because you're not <laughs> we're not scouting you to how well you can play in college. We're scouting you to see how well you'll play in the NFL. So I am being picky with this. I'd love to see him get that second foot down inbounds. He has like two or three catches like this just from this past season where he makes an unbelievable sideline grab. That you're like, how the hell? Did he make that catch and get a foot down? That he only gets one foot down. And you can't cover saying, this any better. This I'm just saying crazy. I'd love to see him get both feet down. But again, I'm being very picky here. Yes. That's very nitpicky. He's he's playing the game to win it for LSU. He's not. Absolutely. And the, the other thing you see on display here is the uh, the ball tracking ability. Because 
the ability to maintain his concentration as that defender's arm is getting in and trying to disrupt his hands, as he's aware of the sideline here against one of the best teams in college football, a team that went to the college football playoff this past season, makes that catch. How did he get his foot down? I mean, that is just crazy. I would like to see both feet down, and I'd like to see full control of the ball when that foot is down because they're if you're a Bama fan, you could make the argument that the control, yeah, that he moves the ball there after his foot comes off the ground. But whatever, we're we're picking nits big time. This is excellent, excellent rep down the field. When you don't win in the route, but you can still win at the catch point, it's Im- almost impossible to defend you. All right, before we continue this breakdown, really quickly, I want to shout out our sponsor here. We're presented by Sinkers Beverages in East Nashville and Bluegrass Beverages in Hendersonville. Make sure to check out Sinkers Beverages and Bluegrass Beverages if you're in the Nashville area. This is a great local business that supports the Titans community. Sinkers has been voted the best liquor store in Nashville by the Nashville scene two years in a row, and Bluegrass has been serving the local community for over 50 years, just celebrated their 50th anniversary last year. Head to the Sinkers Beverages website and sign up for the in-crowd to get access to allocated wines and spirits, exclusive events, and early access to barrel releases and more. You want to check out Sinkers Beverages and Bluegrass Beverages, and they're on Uber Eats. Just open up your Uber Eats app, search Sinkers Beverages, have all the booze you need delivered straight to your home. So check out. Thanks again to our sponsors. All right, Justin, this next one is uh, just a showcase of his speed and how it's impossible to keep up with him. Semi scramble drill, though not really here. His route doesn't die this time because he just he sort of has a, a simple over route that just keeps going and going and going. He keeps taking it, yeah. So this is neighbors here again in the slot, kind of runs out and just over here. And what we'll pay attention to on this route is the way that he stems it outside, wins this route in the stem, and then when he breaks it back this way, he's got the cornerback moving towards the opposite sideline. Again, a great route. So you can see him getting closer and closer to the hash marks here until he's not. And again, we see that sort of ankle flexion here as he rounds off this route without needing to lose speed. He's got the cornerback now on his outside hip. That's just so smooth. Once you get the cornerback on your outside hip like this, as long as you don't run back towards him, unless that's your route, in which case, I mean, he probably could create separation there, but he's got him on the outside hip. You just keep stacking him. They call this stacking. When you run away from the corner and use the angle of separation that you've already created to continue to create that separation. So he's just going to keep running across the field here. Eventually, as Daniels comes out of the pocket, he finds him. Is that Daniels or is this? They had to make a quarterback change in this game. Actually, that's not Daniels anymore, but point stands. Two different quarterbacks in one game. Neighbors continues to be productive. (laughs) I mean, like you said, unless you're running back towards the corner at that point, the, the rep's already been won. Right. He's going to keep stacking them throughout that rep. Like this, he's just so smooth on this play right here. What's funny to me is like if we watch this in real speed, if you watch the cornerback, it looks like he is huffing and puffing and running the absolute hardest he can to catch up to neighbors. It looks like neighbors isn't even breaking a sweat to in this no, route. No, this is just. It looks like it, that's what I meant when I say like just look how it just looks easy to him on yeah. this rep. Like, Neighbors is sort of waiting, waiting, waiting. If he runs too fast, he's going to end up at the sideline before his quarterback is ready to make the throw. But the defensive back is like, I got to run as fast as I absolutely can just to keep up with a guy who's not running as hard as he can. (laughs) Crazy. The athleticism is, I mean, you can't teach it. And when you combine that with some of the refinement we see on tape, it's like, this guy's ready to make an instant impact in the league. We are on to the Ole Miss game. Here he is lined up on the outside here on the line of scrimmage. A rare alignment for him, at least in the tape we've watched so far. A little bit less cushion here from the defensive back. This one against zone, he's just going to sort of take this over route. Find the hole in the zone. We've talked about his ability to win against zone coverage here. Look at how he explodes through these two defenders. And breaks this. line of defenders, eh? Right in front of them. Yeah. Just the line. He's behind all four of them. They are defending the line to gain here on first down. And he is just finding the hole in the zone. I mean, it's almost perfect. Like you couldn't do this better if you were looking. And it's and he's sort of just playing it based off feel. But the amount of space that he's leaving between the defenders here as he comes across defender the middle in front of the of field, him, defender behind him, perfect amount of space between the two of them. And this is a similar play to what we saw earlier, where you said this is going to be his bread and butter, the ability to catch that yep. ball and immediately again turn it up the field is something that's going to be very effective in an NFL offense. We'll go in and take a little bit closer look at it here. I said that early too. I am not bad at this. No, bread and butter right here. 
There he goes, snapping over the middle and continuing to get depth with the route as opposed to coming. If he levels this off, I think this is an important detail, and that's one of the things about neighbor's route running that's impressive is the detail. This route is sort of going this direction. If he levels this off, you give these defenders a chance to gain that depth and recover and get in the passing lane and potentially break it up. But by continuing right. to go up the field, you take that ability away because you're faster than them. They can't recover. If you're running horizontal while they're running vertically, they can make up ground on you. But if you continue to have a vertical element as you run across the field, it's almost impossible to defend. And then immediately get up field, split the defense, another big play. Now, LSU is trailing 28 to 14 right now. And this is against Ole Miss. This isn't like against Alabama. Two score game, no? It's only a second quarter, but they got to make some plays. They got to get back in this game. Here again, neighbors lined up on the outside. Like seeing him lined up on the outside because I do think ultimately the ability to win inside and outside is what makes him so special. If all this production came from these slot fade type of routes, we'd have more question marks. But we because, have some concerns. Yeah. yeah. And not that it wouldn't, not that he couldn't still be a good NFL player. I mean, Justin Jefferson played almost exclusively in the slot at LSU and right. it wins on the outside all the time. AJ Brown didn't play outside at Ole Miss until the last four games of the season when DK Metcalf got hurt. And then he finally got a chance to play outside. Obviously AJ Brown is a fantastic outside receiver, but the fact that we do get to see it in college here and the ability to win on the outside obviously helps fill out the profile and answer some questions you may have. You, you always feel better when you got an answer to a question as opposed to just making a projection. Right. This is an interesting play here. I love these concepts here. LSU doing everything they can to free up their best player. So this guy's going to kind of come across this way, create a little rub situation. Neighbors again with the feel on this play as he just sort of breaks it off. And look at, again, we've talked about this before. They want to get, the defenders want to get hands on him to disrupt his route. Look at how right there, yep. locked in that defender is to try to get his hands on neighbors and, and throw off the route timing. But neighbors, again, just like he did in the last time we showed this, dips that shoulder a little bit. Right there. Comes right off the contact, brushes through it, barely affects him at all. And now he's got so much space because of the, the rub concept action we had going on. His ability to snap off these routes coming to the inside. He's got a huge cushion against this defensive back. It's going to clear this defender in the middle of the field. Ball's already out. Good throw, good timing. Just a great play all around. Incredible. And then what did I say? That, the that's, another, yeah, that's the bread and butter right there. And that's what you can do when he gets the ball in his hands in and space. Look at that, right? I've spoken with a lot of people around the league who feel his yards after catchability is his best trait. It's it's certainly an elite trait that he possesses because he has great vision. He has great tackle breaking ability and elusiveness. And then just that acceleration in the open field too. I mean, right. All right, we're on to the Mizzou game. Another. Similar play to what we saw a couple plays ago against Ole Miss. Seen a bunch of these. Just that huge cushion against zone coverage. <laughs> Find the hole behind the defense. Make the play. I mean, these defenders are lost. Yeah, but, that's that's a rough rep. <laughs> and again, shows off that yak, that tackle breaking and, ability. And this is a Missouri defense that's going to have a ton of guys drafted, a bunch of them in the secondary. This Missouri defense held Ohio State to three points in the Cotton Bowl. Titans just held, uh, hosted the cornerback here, Chris Abrams Drain, on a top 30 visit, right. private 30 visit. And I want to pay attention to the subtleties here because we make it look easy like the defenders are lost, but it's about the way that he he stems this route outside and then bends it back in. He gets these this safety who obviously has to worry about the outside receiver as well, but he gets the right. safety move in this direction, this safety move in this direction, and again, this coverage intentionally leaves the middle of the field open. You want your linebackers maybe to drop and take this away, but the hesitation at this point of the route, the linebacker is trying to cover the flat here, or this, this flat curl area, and this guy just gets totally lost and allows neighbors to run right behind him. This safety has to worry about the guy on the outside, but because neighbors is slanting, slanting his route towards the sideline, he's like, well, maybe I can cover two birds with one stone and just cover this whole area. Neighbors pops it inside, gets wide open again. He's too good for that. <laughs> watch the watch that cornerback or that safety's reaction. Like I said before, you watch the defensive back. You you can tell how good of a route it is. Watch his reaction when neighbors snaps this route inside. <laughs> I just saw it prematurely there a oh, little. Oh oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> and you know the, that that's the that's the body language of a man who knows he's in trouble. Yeah. And it's in fact the other safety who's first there to try to make the play, but 
neighbors that tackle breaking ability. Like I said, he broke Flips multiple it. tackles on 20% of his catches and then carries this guy down the field. Sort of AJ Brown esque. I know he doesn't have the same sort of mass, but that ability to like carry, make the first defender miss, carry the def- other defender down the field, it's really special stuff. Here we have one of those concentration drops. Now, again, a great route here as he sort of sets the defender up in this sort of like a stick route before taking this across the field. I do think this was improvisation. I don't know if this is designed for him to sort of like stop on this little sit route. I think he's supposed to sit there, right? But he recognizes that he's got space to the inside if he runs. Just doesn't catch the ball. And if we look at this from the end zone angle, we can see what happens here. And this happens sometimes with explosive players. Think about Deshaun Jackson, how many you know big drops he had in his career, but also how many explosive plays he made. If we see right here, the ball has not hit his hands yet, but look at the angle of his helmet. He wants to know, where is my closest defender? Where where am I going to have to make a move here? So he's already got he's his eyes. Field already. He's got his eyes up field, takes his eyes off the ball before it gets into his hands. This is correctable stuff. This is a concentration drop. Concentration, yeah. This isn't something I'm going to make a big deal out. I'm not going to say, oh, neighbors shouldn't be a top wide receiver because he has a handful of concentration drops on his tape. It's like, no, you see what else he can do when he gets the ball. But we are going to, again, pit, pick some nits here. A.J. Brown. I mean, how many of these A.J. Brown have? A bunch of them. <laughs> Had him in Tennessee all the time. Yep. So, again, my A.J. Brown comparison. Uh, I'm going to keep bringing it up. Here's another play of him sort of working. Uh, it's a, almost the same play we just saw, the little sit route that he then decides to improvise on when he sees his quarterback start to leave the pocket. If you're not sure which one is neighbors, sorry. He's here in the slot. Comes up the field and just sits down against the zone coverage, right? When the zone collapses on him, when his quarterback starts scrambling, he's like, oh, I'm going to run away from the defender now. Catch this ball on my outside shoulder, even though I'm running inside. Catch the ball on the outside shoulder, pivot around, still get yards after catch, still break the first tackle, require two guys to get me down. All right, this next one is similar to what we saw in those first, you know, that first rep against Florida, the, the 2022 plays, but this one, he doesn't have a big cushion here. He's able to threaten with his speed up the field, get this defender to back off of him before he snaps this around, makes the nice contested catch here on the, on the short curl. Threaten up the field, bang! Look at that defender. Oh. Here, neighbors at the snap, he's not sure if he's going to get press, so he kind of hesitates a little on the release. Yep. And then uses that explosion to burst down the field, eats up that cushion. Look at the cushion here. You got, you know, the whole number zero width there, about two yards. In two steps, he's caught up to the defender. And then, again, with the arm... Makes subtle contact. He does not extend the arm. This one you would never call a penalty on. Good legal way to create separation. Yeah, physical at the top of his route. Cornerback keeps running right by him. Ball's a little more on time than we saw in that 2022 tape. Makes the catch with the yard, two yards of separation at the catch point on a short route. Again, that's impressive. And then make sure to get the first down. We can go look at it a little closer here. I love that initial hesitation into the explosion. I talked about how he varies, you know, sort of the the explosiveness with the, sometimes he uses those fakes, sometimes he uses those false steps in his routes, and sometimes he just explodes through his cuts. This one at the line of scrimmage, the release here, little hesitation, bang, upfield, turn around the defender, make the catch, get the first down. LSU has come back big. I don't know if you saw the score earlier. It was like 20 to eight. Now it's like, now it's a one score game. Another huge play down the field. And this is another example of the defender trying to get hands on him in the route and neighbors just ducking under the contact. Comes up right here. Gives a little a little move here. I mentioned it a couple of times now. The, the variance that he has in his stems. Sometimes you'll see him just keep running right through the break in his route, right? But on this one, he does set the defender up a little bit. A little inside-out hesitation. Yeah, just that, that little hezzy, as they like to call it. Yeah. It's like a basketball dribble, you know, hesitation move. And then when the defender tries to get hands on him here, neighbors counters it with his own contact, dips the shoulder, runs around it, and just finds himself wide open. Look, this is, I I mean, it's zone coverage, so it's not like a man-to-man rep, but at this point in the coverage, 
this zone has converted to man to man. Each one of right. these guys has the guy in their zone. He is supposed to stay on neighbors. Do not get this twisted. He is fooled by this route, by this little yep. inside outside hezzy that comes outside only to snap back inside. This defender keeps coming out. He thinks this is a deep corner route and he gets totally left in the dust here. And you think neighbors and is wide open because he finds a hole in the zone. No, he beats this guy man to man. And I've, I've, I think you're thinking a lot the same thing along the same lines as me here. It's not technically a press man coverage rep. As you said, he's his own coverage rep. But it makes me feel really good about his ability to consistently beat press man at the right. next level. And look at that defender. He's running outside here because he thinks he's going to take away the, the underneath throwing lane for this corner route. And now he's like, wait, wait, look at that defender. He's like, Where do you wait go? a sec. He's going inside and the other safety has to... The other cornerback, the deep third guy, has to sort of react here and come in and make this play. It actually leaves, I think this is Brian Thomas Jr., wide open at the bottom of the screen. Of course, that happens because the ball's already out. Ball's but, out, yeah. But it is interesting to note the effect that a guy like Neighbors can have on your entire offense because safeties are always going to have to account for him with his speed. Makes the catch, and again, the yak ability to get up the field, the vision, the elusiveness. He's the complete package. I want to go in and see what and I mean. Like the way closer. he beats that physicality when, 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 at that point there, it, it makes me feel really good about him playing against Absolutely. press man at the next level. I think, you know, so I saw this listed as a negative for him when I was doing some research that he re like it said sometimes requires physical phys physicality in his route to to beat coverage as opposed to relying on technique. And I'm like, that physicality is technique. Like, what are you talking about? Like, that is a technique to right. Beating it's the type coverage. of technique, absolutely. And especially for like, you think of a guy like A.J. Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, guys who are really physical in yep. their route stems that create a lot of separation. Well, Hopkins not anymore, but used to create a lot of separation. <laughs> okay, now we're on to the Mississippi State game. And Justin, to be honest, we could have ended it here just looking at the tape that we did. But I wanted to include a few plays from Mississippi State because number one, this was Neighbors' best career game. 13 catches, 230-something yards, two touchdowns. I mean, we got to look at a few plays from how he had by far his biggest career production game. And then also, we haven't looked at run blocking yet. So we're going to look at some run blocking here. This is run blocking. It's not a designed run. It's reacting to a quarterback scramble, which I almost think is better to look at than just seeing him in the design run because it's like... Right, react when, on the fly. React on the fly. And when you have a quarterback like Jaden Daniels, who made so many big plays with his legs down the field, yes, Jaden Daniels is elusive, is fast, is athletic, but it requires a team effort. Once you get in the open field, once you get in the second level of the defense, if you don't have guys like neighbors making blocks like this, driving his man to the sideline here, then those explosive plays are much fewer and farther between. So you love to see the way that he goes from receiver to blocker. Again, that quick transition here sort of misses on the initial attempt at contact, but is able to recover and just push his guy outside, riding him to the sideline until Daniels runs out of bounds. You love to see that kind of run blocking. Here's another example of run blocking. This is a designed run. You love to see him come off the line aggressively, line up his target, get hands on him, and continue working down the field even after the running back's tackled. This is just that kind of that nastiness that you want to see in a run blocker, the willingness to get in there, and the ability to be effective at it. You know, Willingness is great, but can you actually make it's the effort. blocks? The effort is there. Effort's there. All right, here we got neighbors again in the slot. Just a simple little over route here, but I love the way that he goes low to help his quarterback to make this catch. We're not going to spend a lot of time breaking this one down, but the way that he comes back to the ball, goes low, uses his body. Look, the defender is putting his hand in there to try to break this up, but Neighbors uses his body as a shield. Great job shielding the defender. First down, signal it, young man. Great quarterback catch. was under pressure. He recognizes it. Got to become a bit more reliable. Right. Be ready to be open. All right. Now we get to see the infamous slot fade route. And this one you've probably seen if you've watched any other neighbors breakdowns, everyone's using this play, but gets this cornerback to start moving inside again with a slight inside stem before snapping it out on the post corner, post slot fade route. I, I would call it a slot fade. You could call it a corner. Sets him up. Doesn't really create oh. a lot of separation at the route break, but because he gets to his top speed so quickly, once he comes out of his he break, set him up. Oh. and then you love to see the contested catchability. We'll get a broadcast replay of this one so we can really hone in on what he's doing here. 
This one is different from some of the ones we saw earlier where he run, runs cleanly through the route break. This one, he gives a little setup. He gives a little move, a little false step there, a little hesitation, slow down, and then bang, explode outside. He's, up he's got yards. him still thinking if he's going in or out before right. he declares. And then the ball tracking, get the hands up. Not exactly high pointing. Again, I'm nitpicking. Not exactly using that 42-inch vertical, young man. Sort of just alligator arming. I mean, his arms are not even extended here. But he's got so much separation. He's got good ball skills enough to make this catch. And not only make the catch, but control it through the ground. Hard landing on the ground. Look at the ball tucked under his arm there. Easy catch. Say it one more time from this angle. Goes up. To make the catch, late-ish hands. Not super late hands. His hands are already up, but late-ish. Late enough that the defender is trying to stick his arm in there. But defender can't. does his best. He's got his hand somewhat in there. Yeah. Just better receiver play. And again, control it through the catch there. And then, you know what, man? You deserve to dance. Dance on him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a few plays left here. Here's neighbors on the outside and run blocking again. And this one I love because this is what you're asked to do at the NFL level. You know, it's not as it's not always just run across and block a cornerback and get in the way a little bit. Sometimes you got to come and dig out a safety or dig out a linebacker. So you love to see the effort on this play as he comes into the middle of the field, lines up. Look at that. Get low, squat down, get that leverage, and pop the guy backwards. Look, he gets him up right off his feet and then continues to drive him away from the ball carrier. Doesn't give up after making initial contact. Finishing. Almost a better run blocker than Olu Fashan Fashanu. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. He's not. But um, you love to see the effort there. Again, we got another slot fade route. And again, just using that speed to blow right by the defender. So watch as he sets him up again. We this is about, so easy. We talked about the variance in his routes. A second ago, we saw him set up a defender with a quick little hesitation. On this one, we see him just run through the break. And look at how long it takes the defender to react. Look, this defenders, is decisive and confidence. Yep. And again, the way that he takes this stem inside, starts outside the hashes. He winds up inside the hashes. Defenders open to the inside of the field, has to spin all the way around to get to the outside. And that is caused by neighbors slanting this route towards the inside of the field at the beginning. So he started outside the hashes. Now look, he's planting inside the hashes. And look at the defender as neighbors makes this break outside. He's struggling to flip those hips and get around. He actually does a pretty nice job, the defender, of flipping the hips. That's technique right there. Flip those hips around and sprint with the man. But look at how Neighbors just eats this up. He goes from being a couple yards further, like closer to the right. to the line of scrimmage than the defender to being a couple <laughs> yards closer to the end zone. Like that kind of speed you just can't teach. And then this ball is a little bit late, a little underthrown. He has to slow up slightly for it but sticks the arms out and makes an incredible catch. And this is one that I said, I said the last play we're going to look at reminds me of A.J. Brown. This is one that reminds me a little bit of A.J. Brown. We haven't got to that last play yet, but just the way to, that he is able to track the ball over his shoulder. Here again, we see another example of him avoiding contact in his stem. This defender here wants to push him. Look, he's already yep. dipping the shoulder. Look at how much his shoulder is dipped there. But the body control to a, the balance to dip your shoulder like that and not lose any speed, not be the disrupted. Way he dips underneath that contact. My God. Isn't that sexy? I mean, I'm a little hot and bothered over here. Look at that. <laughs> that is excellent. And then snap your head around because you're in the zone hole now. Find the soft yep. spot in the zone. I mean, this is like perfect soft spot when you talk that about transition where from the avoiding defenders contact are. Contact to getting your head back up, knowing that ball's probably coming out fantastic and then try to make a play up the field you don't always like to see your guys run back towards the line of scrimmage but he is you're, able to you're really nitpicky today he eh? is able to recover hey i gotta be hard on these draft prospects man we get so <laughs> excited about 50 guys every year and then 10 of them turn out to be good like we gotta sometimes <laughs> pick these nits but uh yeah just the ability to zoop no you're not getting hands on me <laughs> make the catch turn into a ball carrier even though he goes backwards, he does end up getting past where he initially caught the ball. So can he, can he rush the, the passer with that dip? Yeah, right. Looking like Harold Landry out there. 
Now here I included this play, even though it's like a very basic route and a very, very like, it's not a whole lot that he does on this play because I think this is the kind of play that translates to the NFL. You got all three of these receivers running clear out routes here, opening up the space underneath for neighbors to sort of just chill out below. And, and this is the kind of thing you've seen Brian Callahan do with Jamar Chase where sometimes you need to just get the ball in the hands of your best player out in space and let him make a play. So I like that we get to see this on his tape. You don't always have to win one-on-one as a receiver. Sometimes if your offense sets you up, look at how much space is created by these clear-out routes. I mean, you get the ball in the hands of your best player with no defender within 10 yards of him, great things are going to happen. So that's the reason that we we included this play. Explosive 15 plus yard gain. All right, this next one I included just again to show off neighbor's route running ability. He doesn't actually get the ball on this play. He's going to sort of stem this inside before peeling it back out, a little corner route, and he's wide open. He gets wide open on this play. Defender wasn't quite ready for the snap, but as he runs by the linebacker 44 there into the open space, it's a good route concept because you got this receiver clearing out this defensive back. But when you're this wide open, man, throw him the ball. Look at Daniels. <laughs> Daniels is cocked and ready to throw. Why does he not release this ball? This should have been a 25-yard catch. Instead, Daniels tucks and runs. But man, Neighbors was wide open. I would have been so I don't like that rep for Daniels at all. No, I don't either. We'll we'll take one more close look at it here. We can get through this one rather quickly, though. Just wide open. Sorry, Commanders fans. Put your hand up. I'm open. I'm open. What's the quarterback doing? Oh, the quarterback's running with the ball. I mean, he got a first down. Can't really hate on him too much. <laughs> Why the Bears just traded Justin Fields. I think it's stuff like that. Yeah, right. This is a perfect route. The perfect route does not exist. I disagree. <laughs> Lots of cushion. So you're already, this defender's already ready to be beat deep, right? I mean, he doesn't want to get beat deep. Lots of cushion. Neighbors runs Spoiler that, alert. <laughs> Neighbors runs that same little stutter stop and go move we saw against Alabama that didn't work. The little stutter there, well... Let me tell you, it works this time. Defender plants oh. and comes back down the field. Oh, wow. He's got him on the merry-go-round. Whoop, spin cycle. Neighbors runs right by him. Look at that space. We got to watch this one more time in real speed because it's just unbelievable how fast he blows by this defender. And if this ball isn't underthrown by 10 yards, this is a 65-yard touchdown. Instead, 100%. it's just a long catch. I think we can look at this one more time a little closer in. Stutter. Zoop. See ya. Gone. Safety's not even close either. If only that ball wasn't underthrown, this would have been on the highlight reel. But it's a master class of route running. And this is against the same defender now on the next play. All right, this is the play. This is the last play we're looking at. This is the one I said reminds me of an A.J. Brown catch. Same defender. Just got beat by that stutter and go on the previous possession. He's not going to allow that stutter and go to beat him again, right? He knows who he's up against. Malik Neighbors, one of the most dangerous downfield players in the game. Even so, you love the ability of Neighbors here to sink those hips and stop on a dime before turning up the field. Defender running right with him. Now, it's hard to see from this angle on the All-22. So we got it, the broadcast replay that's, here. That's, by the way, that's the camera on Richardson who uh, mm. I believe ran a blazing fast 40 at the combine is draft eligible as well this year. That Now tell me this doesn't remind he's gonna you. He's going to get drafted. Tell me this doesn't remind you of an A.J. Brown catch. The way he's tracking the ball just puts his arms out and like the ball just magically pops into his hands somehow. Just drops right into the breath. That reminds me of the uh, the touchdown against the Bengals a little bit in the end zone. Yeah. It also AJ, reminds me. the playoffs? It reminds me of one against the Eagles he had too before he was an Eagle or and maybe one against uh, Kansas City he had deep down the sideline. I think in the second time the Titans played Kansas City in the regular season. Just rem- This is like that elite ball tracking down the field ability that you can't teach. Like, you watch this in real time and you're like, how the hell, Where where? when does the ball get into his arms? Like, <laughs> it's unbelievable. And yeah, you deserve to celebrate for that. Didn't quite get in the end zone. Again, we talked about this earlier in the video, but the ability to not necessarily win in the route but when at the catch point, when you can do both, impossible to defend. Right. And that does it. That completes our Malik Neighbors film review. Final thoughts on this prospect as we quickly wrap this up. Uh, top five player overall in the draft. I mean, everything that 
Um, I, I've said over these last couple of months, ability to abuse zone coverage, enough physicality to beat press when required. Uh, the yard after catch, run after catch ability is outstanding. Uh, I, I, I had said earlier, I think he's a, a, a pretty damn good contested catch winner when it comes to it. Um, the production speaks for itself. Top yeah. five overall prospects in the draft. I'll close with this. This last thought as we debate, you know, the Joe Alt versus Malik Neighbors, Panay Sewell yeah. versus Jamar Chase. You say like, well, it's different back then. J- Jamar Chase was close to a generational receiver prospect. I mean, is Neighbors not in that conversation? You just look at their builds. They're both six feet. Neighbors 200 pounds, 199, 200 pounds. Jamar 201. Neighbors 435, unofficial 40 at his pro day, maybe 438. Jamar Chase official 438. Neighbors 42 inch vertical. Jamar Chase 41 inch vertical. Neighbors 129 inch broad. Jamar Chase 132 inch broad. Very close. I mean, they're very similar athletic profiles. Neighbors outproduced Jamar Chase in terms of college production. Now, granted, Chase was playing alongside Justin Jefferson and sat out a year and all that. But Clyde Edwards Hilaire in the backfield that are running back. Oh, stack team, but also played with Joe Burrow. I mean, Jaden Daniels, yeah. Heisman Trophy winner. But think about how much less pass attempts Jaden Daniels had than a guy like Joe Burrow just because of his ability to run and the number of times he he tucked the ball and scrambled or ran a designed run play because of that ability less chances for neighbors to make plays still outproduce Jamar Chase I mean this the Penny Sewell Jamar Chase the Joe Alt versus uh versus Justin uh, versus uh Malik neighbors like are Penny Sewell and Joe Alt not in a similar level as prospects at the tackle position are Jamar Chase and Malik neighbors not a similar level of prospect here like I could totally get on board. First of all, it's way more exciting as a fan. So <laughs> for that reason, of course, you want the wide receiver. You think about what all the stuff Brian Callahan said. When it's all equal, we prefer the guys who can score touchdowns. You think about what he did when he was in Cincinnati and made part of the decision to draft Jamar Chase over Panay Sewell. Now, we don't know if either of these guys will be on the board. They could go five and six to the Chargers and Giants. They but could. if they're both there... I don't know. Like, I think I, the Titans probably lean towards Alt at this point, especially Rand Carthon spoke on Tuesday and talked about how they still need to fix the offensive line. They've made all these moves at receiver. I mean, signing Calvin Ridley is a huge move at receiver in the offseason. Haven't done anything on the offensive line at, at the tackle position yet. So maybe that points to them leaning towards Alt. But man, the debate, I think, rages on. I'll be honest with you. I'm not just saying it. I really hope they're both there because I just want to see what they would do. Same. And I mean it. And, and I, I think I'd be excited either way. My feelings have been clear. If it's neighbors, I will be concerned about the tackle position. Um, but again, I'd, I'd be excited because look at the player we just watched. Wow, we just spent about an hour and a half breaking down film. So of course I'd be excited. Um, I want them to both be there just to see what they would do. I really do. Yeah. And just imagine if the Titans hadn't beat the Jaguars in 18. Week 18. I know, loser fan mentality, blah, 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 blah. I will never trade the Dolphins win because that game was incredible. The Monday night comeback, awesome. awesome. But I would absolutely trade a week 18 win. Will Levis wasn't even playing. Like, you're, you're not gaining anything. Yeah, they could have been at the fifth spot. They could have yeah, actually had... out. That was the they, only thing they gained, right? That's fair. Like, that's at fair. At that five but, spot, Marvin Harrison Jr., Joe Alt. All they did there was... Maybe all three of them would be there. <laughs> all they did was give Jacksonville a chance to draft Quinion Mitchell there at their pick instead of pushing them further down the draft titans could have been in that five slot could have actually had the neighbors versus alt decision to make and i don't think they'll get to make that decision but i hope you're right and i hope they do get to make that decision so we will see all right thanks to everyone for watching hopefully this video does not get blocked on youtube if it does (laughs) we'll put it on twitter so there you go Um, appreciate everyone for tuning in make sure you are subscribed to the podcast Thanks again to our sponsor, Sinkers Beverages in East Nashville, Bluegrass Beverages in Hendersonville. Head to the Sinkers Beverages website or check the link in this description to join the in-crowd. In-crowd members get access to exclusive wines and spirits, special events, barrel releases, and more. So make sure you are signed up to join the Sinkers in-crowd. We'll be back soon with another breakdown. This one was a long one, so it may take us a few days, but we appreciate everyone for tuning in. Until next time, y'all stay safe out there and tighten up. A Broadway Sports Media Production.